Michael Brown does not want to be remembered for a riot. He wants to be remembered as the one that made America deal with how we gonna police in the United States. is not about you. Not at all. Not at all. This is about justice. This is about fairness. And America is going to have to come to terms with there's something wrong that we have money to get military equipment to police forces. But we don't have money for training and money for public education and money to train our children. America How do you think my, my, my. we look when the world can see you can't come up with a police report but you can find a video When young people yes, sir. march non-violently asking for the land of the free and the home of the brave to hear their cry and you put snipers on the roof and pointed guns at them, how do we look? When people that support the officer, and they have a right to do that, and an obligation if they feel that. But if they support him, they're supporters. But if we come to support the family, we're dividing the country. What does God require of us? In three weeks, we saw Marlon Pinnock, a woman in Los Angeles, laid out on the freeway, Congresswoman Maxine Waters. A California Highway Patrolman hit her 15 times on video with no weapon in her hand, nothing, no threat to her. Right after that, a man, they said that he had Lucy cigarettes. And they put an illegal chokehold on him. Man videoed it 11 times, he said, I couldn't breathe. And the man, a policeman, wouldn't let him go. Later that week, we see Michael laying on the ground. America, it's time to deal with policing. We are not the haters, we're the healers. Well, what does it require of us? 
We can't have a fit. Right. We got to have a movement. Right. A fit, you get mad and run out for a couple of nights. A movement means we got to be here for the long haul yeah. and turn our chance into change. Yeah. Our demonstration in the legislation, we have got to stay on this so we can stop this. We need the Congress to have legislation about guidelines in policing. We need to have a fair, impartial investigation. Those that are compromised will not be believed. And we need those that are bad cops. We're not anti-police. We respect police. But those police that are wrong need to be dealt with just like those in our community are wrong need to be dealt with. Let us be real clear. The only thing, if you have a bushel of apples, the only thing that messes up good apples is if you don't take the rotten apples out the bushel. We are not the ones making the cops look bad. It's the bad apples that you won't take out the bushel. But then let me say this, what does God require? We got to be straight up in our community too. We had to be outraged at a nine-year-old girl killed in Chicago. We had to be outraged by our disrespect for each other. Our disregard for each other. Our killing and shooting and running around gun toting each other so that they're justifying trying to come at us because some of us act like the definition of blackness is how low you could go. Wow. Blackness has never been about being a gangster or a thug. Blackness was no matter how low we was pushed down, we rose up anyhow. was never surrendering our pursuit of excellence. It was when it was against the law to go to some schools. We built black colleges and learned anyhow. When we couldn't go downtown to church, we built our own AME church and our church of God in Christ. We never surrendered. We never gave up and now we get to the 21st century. We get to where we got some positions of power and you decide it ain't black no more to be successful. Now you want to be a nigga and call your woman a hoe. You've lost where you come from. <laughs> We got to clean up our community so we can clean up the United States of America. Red Mal, you don't understand what they doing to us. I understand it. But I understand that nobody gonna help us if we don't help ourselves. <laughs> Sitting around, feeling sorry for ourselves, won't solve the problem, Spike. Sitting around having ghetto pity parties. 
rather than organizing and strategizing and putting our differences aside. Yes, we got young and old. Yes, we got things that we don't like about each other, but it's bigger than our egos. It's bigger than who shot John. We need everybody because I'm going to tell you, I don't care how much money you got. I don't care what position you hold. I don't care how much education you got. If we can't protect a child walking down the street in Ferguson and protect him and bring justice, all you got don't matter to nobody but you. We are required to leave here today and change things. Michael Brown must be remembered for more than disturbances. He must be remembered for this is when they started changing what was going on. Oh yeah, there have been other times in history that became seminal moments and this is one of those moments. And this young man, for whatever reason, has appealed to all of us that we've got to solve this and not continue this. This man, this woman, their spouses, their family are going to go through some real trials and tribulations. They're going to call them all kind of names. But their target is all of us. If we cannot focus and do what the Lord requires of us, we'll be right back here again. Let me say this in closing. The policies of this country cannot go unchallenged. We cannot have aggressive policing of low-level crimes and can't deal with the higher level. Something strange that you can get all these guns into the hood, but you run around chasing folks selling loose cigarettes and walking in the middle of the street. There's something crazy about that kind of policing. Well, now they are policemen are human. Yes, they are. But they also have a different kind of commitment. Because once you put on that state badge and that gun that is state backed up, you cannot react like another citizen. You're supposed to be trained above that. And we should expect that in our community like they get it in any other community. No community in America would tolerate an 18-year-old boy laying in the street four and a half hours and we not going to tolerate it either. Whatever happened, the value of this boy's life must be answered by somebody. I want to say to the family, yes, sir. Yes, sir. you got some difficult days. Won't be long for the crowds to be gone. These cameras will go on to another story. But I want you to know that there is a God. A God, I'm told Michael believed in, that'll be with you when everybody else is gone. And he requires of you to believe in him. And if you trust him, he'll give you strength that you didn't know you had. There's a God that sits high, and he ain't looking at no good bishops and pontiffs up here God loves those that love mercy 
and do justice and walk humbly before him. God will make a way. God will guide your feet. How do I know? Because he's done it for me. The challenge from here is that you must be committed that for whatever reason, God chose you and chose Michael. Michael's gone on to get his rest now. We're required in his name to change the country. I sat and thought about this, Bishop Jakes, and thought about where and what was the meaning of all of this. As I was sitting in the room here in St. Louis last week, going, getting ready to go to the Unity Rally, I was trying to figure out what made sense, Attorney Crump, and I couldn't figure it out. They were Violence they reporting in Ferguson, there was peace rallies. Some of the preachers was mad that some of the other preachers was in town. Some of the leaders mad about the other leaders, all this backstabbing and backbiting. More folk worried about getting on the program than developing a program. But Leslie, I remembered an old preacher told me a story that tied it together for me. He said, Al, I was reading a novel one night. He said, the more I read, the more I couldn't put it down, the more intense it got. He said to me, Michael, he said, I, I, it was time for me to go to bed and I had to preach early in the morning, it was a Saturday night, he said, but I couldn't put it down because I had to deal with the plot of the story and I couldn't figure the plot out. He said, I looked at the clock, it was 12 midnight, and I wanted to put it down, but I couldn't figure out the plot. He said, I looked again and it got one in the morning. I knew I had to get up early to preach. He said, so Al, I cheated. I turned to the end of the book. And I saw how the story ended. And that's how I got my rest. I want you to know, Michael Sr., I want you to know, Leslie, I cheated. I sat up in the hotel and took out my Bible. And I turned to the end of the book. Yes. I don't know how long the investigation will be. I don't know how long the journey will be. But I know how this story going to end. The first will be last. The last will be first. The lion and the lamb go lay down together. And God will, God will, God will make a way for his children. I've been to the end of the book. Justice is going to come. Justice is going to come. Justice is going to come.